race ahead of us. We're going to go straight into racing for the Demon Tweaks Yokohama Classic Stock Catch Championship. We already have the green flag waved at the back. We've got the red lights on. The lights go out and away we go. And it's a good start from pole position by Stuart Place. Not quite such a good start from uh, Pip Hammond alongside him on the front row of the grid. So it's going to be Stuart Place leading then as they head down towards Clervo Corner for the first time. It looks like it's Pete Morgan there in third. A lot of curb taken by Pip Hammond. That unsettles the car off the road. Goes number 12, James Hazelhurst in the Peugeot 205 GTI. But he does get out of the gravel trap on the other side. But he will have lost a lot of places because of that. They head through Hawthorne then for the first time and through the chicane. And then on to the back stretch. So it's Stuart Place leading in the number 87 car. Pip Hammond is second and the battle is on for third because Chris Deer is challenging Pete Morgan. Yeah, that's right, Ian. Uh, Pip Hammond did well to save his big slide and a big lock-up now from Pete Morgan as he breaks desperately late down into Tower Bend. He just about made it through the corner. There's Jason Wood, who's trying to... But he's got Ben Bateman behind him already, so Ben Bateman must have passed, what, more than half a dozen cars, more than that, about ten cars already, so he's absolutely flying. But up front, it's Stuart Place under lots and lots of pressure from Pip Hammond through the S's. He's right on the tail, right on the rear bumper of Place, and now Pip Hammond tries to find room, but he can't do it through Barcroft. They're absolutely together and uh, so it's played from Hammond then a gap back to Pete Morgan who's still under pressure from Chris Deer and then into fifth is Paul Thorpe he's absolutely flying isn't he this he only drove the car yesterday in qualifying for the first time he's not really been in the race car has he for a couple of years and he's into the top five already absolutely you said he was just happy to get into the top ten of this weekend in, in qualifying so he'll be delighted to be fifth but he's got a lot of work to keep Martin Kayser uh, Martin Rogers by the looks of it behind him as this race goes on but they come through to complete lap number one and the exit of the hairpin I can see that Stuart Place went a bit wide and Pip Hammond is gaining on him as they head along the start to finish straight and towards Clervo Corner in third place is the break Pete Morgan in fourth place it is the car more of last year's run up Chris Deer but the two leaders together down into Clervo Corner I don't think Pip is quite able to make a move at Clervo this time it didn't take as much curb as he did on the opening lap that's for certain He's still there in P2, Morgan third. Different lines being taken by the drivers through Hawthorne there as well. And Deer in fourth. There is then a bit of a gap back then to Paul Thorpe in fifth position. But Place continues to lead. Looks like Pip Hammond really quick through the fast corners. That's where I think he's got the advantage. And now he's challenging down towards Tower, but Stuart Place is defending. We know it's bumpy down here. This is where people were locking up yesterday. But the top two get through OK, although Stuart Place runs out wide over the curve. But again, it was through the S's into Barcroft, where Pip Hammond challenged on the last lap. Can he try to do it this time? But obviously, it's not the easiest of places to overtake, though, around this section of the track. And yes, absolutely together around the outside goes Pip Hammond through the Jim Clark S's. That's the wrong side though, really, for an overtake through Barcos. So he tries to cut back, but Stuart Place has it covered. He's not moving the car around, is he? Just putting the car in the places where Pip Hammond wants to come through. So therefore it's the same order. And on the last lap through the complex, Stuart Place seemed a bit quicker than Pip Hammond. Let's see if that's uh, replicated this time. Behind, it's still Morgan versus Deer, and Paul Thorpe's defended for his life to keep Martin Cager at bay for fifth, and he locks up a little bit in the XR2 into the complex. More paddles as well further back, but up front it is Stuart Place that continues to lead. Again, through the complex here, and he's able to pull away. Yeah, gets, uh, carries good speed through there, but then uh, along the stroke, possibly Pip Hammond able to close in and to try and work with Pete Morgan and Chris Deer, who are right with him as well now. So it's fourth for the lead, it's five for fifth headed by Paul Thorpe with Martin Case just behind him. And then just behind him is Martin Rogers in the number 39 car, Jason Watkinson and Titch Kelso also in that secondary group. But here's the fight for the lead and Pip Hammond right back with Stuart Place as they head through Hawthorne this time. But Pip has got to keep in mind that he's got Pete Morgan just behind him and Chris Deere just behind that as well. So he's got to balance really attack and defense. He heads down the straight. He's really almost touching the bumper of Stuart Place down there. And he's positioning his car on the inside line for Tower this time. He's going to be alongside. Pip Hammond may well get the lead as they go into the right hand of their door handle. The door handle as they go through the right hander. And I think Pip Hammond will probably get the place. They're still side by side as they come out of the corner and head towards the Jim Clark S's. How is this all going to pan out? They are still alongside as far as I can see through the Jim Clark S's. But this time it's Pip Hammond on the inside line. So he should make the move stick here. I think he probably will. He has done. It took about a third of a lap to do it, but Pip Hammond goes through to take the lead. We are coming into the part of the track where Stuart Place is quicker now, so let's see if he can fight back, and he's tied to through Sonny. He's back alongside Pip Hammond. First 
money out, but Pip Hammond just about is able to pull in front. But now it certainly is a four-car battle with Pete Morgan and Chris Deere joining in. It's just frantic behind, but it's hard to take a ride off this lead battle because the top four are together as they turn their way through the complex. Can Stuart play find a way through? They clobber over the curves there. So it's Vauxhall from Perjo from Ford as they turn their way. And here comes Stuart Place up the inside through the hairpin. He takes this tighter line through the hairpin, but then the outside line, Pip Hammond should have a bit more traction and therefore he's going to lead across the line down towards Clairvaux. The smoking car a bit further back, I think, is the car of Rick Groom, who's running in 12th position, but uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, engine smoke or something mechanical, but as the leaders are down at Clairvaux and Hawthorns once again, it's Hammond from place this time in the number 87 car, then you've got the very experienced Pete Morgan, he was a stock hatch racer back in the day when that was uh, first round, and Chris Deer who has been uh, experiencing lots of different kinds of racing, including a champion in Metro racing as well. Uh, thick end of 20 years ago now, though, so a little while back. He's alongside Pete Morgan now, and he's on the outside line for Tower Corner, though. He's got his car nosing in front. Can he hold on to third position? I think the answer is probably no. So it is Pete Morgan still in third place, but he runs out wide on the exit of Tower Corner. So this might give Chris Deere another chance. Can he get the car on the inside line through the Jim Clark S's? and take third place away. The leader's just running through shot. Now, it is still Pete Morgan in third place, but a very good battle uh, for third. And the top two just breaking away a little bit now, I think, from Pete. Yeah, Pip, uh, Pip Hammond is phenomenal through the fast corner, through the chicane. He picked up about six car lengths over Stuart Place, who then caught him again through tower. But through the fast corners, Pip Hammond, particularly through the chicane, is absolutely amazing. But now, again, through the slower corner, Stuart Place catches him again and is challenging for the lead as they turn their way through the complex. For fifth, it's almost overlapping, but Paul Thorpe there still ahead of Martin Case. Now, through the hairpin last time, uh, Stuart Place got alongside Pip Hammond, so Pip Hammond defends, but Stuart Place still finds some space to try and get alongside Hammond runs out wide Stuart Place on the tighter line doesn't really work and as they battle a bit, uh, that allowed Pete Morgan and Chris Deere to get a bit closer there's a driving standard flag going out now we haven't really seen much of that in the racing yesterday and that's for 47 Robert Campbell that's gone out okay that's a bit further back here's the battle for fifth Paul Thorpe just ahead of Martin Kayser then Martin Rogers is seventh uh, with in eighth position Jason Watkinson with Titch Kelso, Richard Kelso all over the back of him and then to the top ten has come Jason Wood ahead of Paul Brock and Rick Groom. So we're about halfway through this race now, it's number 30, uh, 32, Pip Hammond leading, 87, Stuart Place is second. For third place it's number 46 now, Chris Deere, because on the way down to Tower Corner he's got ahead of number, 40, uh, number 8, Pete Morgan, but Morgan getting back through on the inside line at Tower Corner, so it was a short lift for third place for Chris Deere. Fifth is 40, Paul Thorpe, and sixth is 88, Martin Kayser. Stuart Place challenged for the lead in front, and that's held him up, he's not been on the right line, so his side by side with Pete Morgan now, through the Jim Clark S's, it's through he committed round him and Stuart Place bails out of it and he might lose another place he's going to drop is he to the back of this leading group no he kicked ahead of Chris Deere but he bailed well out there alongside Pete Morgan and, the change and he's going off now Stuart Place has outbraked himself now down towards Sunny so um, he's now off the track and dropping down position change for fifth place as well because Martin Kayser has got through but he's off the circuit at Sunny as I say that someone told me yesterday the commentators curse was working well um, but uh, yeah so Martin Kayser has now dropped back quite a long way and uh, so Paul Thorpe back into fifth position as a result of that but he's only just behind now Stuart Place uh, Place having been off the circuit at Sunny as well so I wonder if there's maybe some fluid down or something up there that has caused that so it's Pip Hammond leading uh, Pete Morgan in second Chris Deer third Stuart Place fourth now he's got work to do to regain oh he's got a problem Stuart Place has got a problem he's being passed by Paul Thorpe down the uh, start and finished straight there it looks like Stuart Place's race might be run, Josh. Yeah, this is the, the newly built car as well. Obviously, I haven't done that much running. So whether there's some kind of brake issue that caught him out at Sunny, but yeah, he's pulling off now, isn't he? And out of the race, that's a real shame from pole position. Yesterday went so well, and now uh, some work to do there. But get that car out in just a few hours' time for race two. But that means that Paul Thorpe is now into fourth place. Martin Rogers has got up to fifth, and Jason Watkinson into the top six. That's the highest we've seen him up, so he'll be delighted with that. A uh, bit further back, there's Rick Groom. There's that smoky car that you spoke about, and Paul Brock is in front of him. They've both been passed by 
James Hazelhurst. Remember, he went off on the first lap and he's got himself into the top 10. Yeah, fastest lap of the race so far to Pitt Pavan of 142.75, which is well underneath his own lap record. So we're working now lap six of this race with five minutes or so left to go. There's Ryan Clark going through number 33. He's in 16th position, the 41-year-old from Gatwick. It's 1987 Peugeot 205 GCI in the uh, World Rally Championship Peugeot Tribute livery. He's ahead of Ben Bateman. Remember, he had that fantastic first lap. Now he's dropped back uh, for second. This battle doesn't uh, relent, does it? Pete Morgan versus Chris Deer as they turn their way out of the uh, complex. It, Pip Hammond is getting away. Now he's not battling with Stuart Place. So they turn their way through the hairpin. In second place, uh, Pete Morgan. In third place, Chris Deere is right in the toe. So three different cars in the podium positions. Nova, Fiesta and 205. And they make their way then down towards uh, Clairvaux for the seventh lap of this 15 minute race. And they're now one and a half seconds behind Pip Hammond, who's just done the fastest lap at 142.59. Martin Case has got back up to seventh place, as you can see on screen there on, on that lap with the demise, I guess, of, uh, of Stuart Place helping him uh, to do that. As we watch for second and third, Chris Deere closing in on Pete Morgan as they head to Tower. He's going to be on the outside line, though, for Tower Corner. So you've got XR2, Fiesta, Peugeot 205, GTI together, but they're both now a second and a half or so behind the Nova of Pip Hammond in the lead of the race. And then there's quite a gap back, about six seconds, to Paul Thorpe in fourth place, who's doing well here to keep both Martin Rogers and Jason Watkinson uh, at bay as well. Yeah, so he had Martin Kayser in the first half of the race. Now he's got the, uh, the car of uh, Martin Rogers, like you say, and Jason Watkinson hanging in there inside the top six. Uh, he did the uh, two afternoon test sessions on Friday, both times when it hailed when he went out on track. So he'll be pleased to be out on track running. It? It's nice and sunny today, but I'm having a really good run though. And Paul Fort defending then down towards the complex. He's certainly not lost any of this racecraft, has he? I mean, after he's only really done one-off races in the last five or six years. Yep, has been a race winner in the past though, in, uh, yep. in classic stock hatch, of course. So uh, he's no, no mean driver. Central Barrel winner Pembrae, I think it was. Yeah, he was saying that went really, really wet, I think. He said he, yeah. he, yeah. he said he's looking forward to going there later in the year. But not many drivers don't think Safe Henry is one of their favourite places to go to, but Paul Fox said that's one of his. Well, if you have a win there, it certainly sort of influences your thinking, doesn't it? Absolutely right. So he turns his way then down towards Clairvaux for what will be the penultimate lap of this race. It'll be a nine lap race. I reckon, for the Classic Stock Hats Championship. And Paul Fork there turns his way through then in his Ford Fiesta XR2, a car that's been pretty successful. And oh. Martin Kayser goes bouncing across the garage. I didn't see how that started, but it didn't end particularly nicely. Martin first came to Croft when he was 11 years old to watch the Group B Rallycross. And I think he was, uh, <laughs> he was do doing some, he was almost finding the Rallycross circuit there, wasn't he? Was Martin, it's his local circuit from, uh, from the northeast that he hails originally, but he lives down in Coventry. The second fastest person in this race is James Hazelhurst, who's there in ninth place. Remember, he went off at the start. He did win, didn't he, that race at Silverstone a few years ago? Yeah. Uh, but we haven't really seen him in the front position since then or before then, but he's really quick here today at Croft. Meanwhile, Paul Fort is still under pressure, this time for Martin Rogers, as they turn their way down towards Sunny. Paul Fort doesn't really find the apex there, but he's able to get the car turned in well enough that Martin Rogers can't get through. And they therefore then turn their way down now towards the complex for the penultimate time. Martin Rogers darts out. Yeah, I was going to say Paul Fort, but he's in a car that has been won in in the hands of Andrew Lightstead and Imran Khan in the past. So that car has got some um, pedigree, but hasn't raced uh, much lately. And <laughs> really uses a lot of curve there through the complex. I think the lead gap's coming down. It was 1.89 seconds. We're going to go on to the, the last lap. Yes, the last lap board does go out. Has it actually come down or is that just my eyes? Just waiting for the time of screen to update itself. 1.24, yes, it's come down by more than half a second. That's not because Pip Hammond's going slow. He was only 300th of his fastest lap, but Chris did just on a 1 minute 41.81, which is fantastic. And he got past Pete Morgan. We missed that, didn't we? Yeah. Chris 
Andy got past Pete Morgan and immediately has gone super quickly. He was about a second off in qualifying, but he suddenly found a load of pace in the race, the former MG champion in Metros and in Midgets. And can he catch Pip Hammond on this last lap? It's almost a little bit too late. He couldn't get past Pete Morgan for a long time, but now he has. He is very rapid indeed. Half a lap to go. If he catches him, he's only really going to get one chance to go through, and I'm sure Pip Hammond won't be leaving the door open. Paul Thorpe has dropped to ah. sixth place. He's behind Martin Rogers and Jason Watkinson now, I can see, out of our commentary box window. But here's the leader, Pip Hammond, with that lead now, probably only about a second, I would say, over Chris Deer. So any mistake now in this final third of a lap or so could be punished. Probably not going to happen, though, is it, with Pip Hammond? Uh, we probably shouldn't say that until the race is done, but uh, Pip Hammond turns his way then out of Sunny and up towards the complex. Look how much Chris Deer's dropped Pete Morgan since getting past him. So Chris Deer, uh, probably one of the favourites of the championship this year. He showed lots of pace at the end of last season. He is going to get a chance, isn't he, to challenge Pip Hammond into the final corner, Ian? He is up to the hairpin for the final time. And if you can get a good run out of the hairpin, who knows what might happen. It's a reasonably long run to the finish line here they're almost touching they may actually have touched as they went out of the hairpin but actually it's not really worked out for Chris Deere it has worked out for Pip Hammond who takes the checkered flag to win round one of the 2022 Demon Tweaks Yokohama Classic Stock Cats Championship in Ghana with 32. Chris Deere is second Pete Morgan is third it's going to be Martin Rogers that comes through to take fourth position Jason Watkinson fifth and Paul Thorpe yep he's absolutely <laughs> delighted with sixth place hand out of the cup for yeah, I'm sure the driver in front, Jason Watkinson, would be too. That's his best result of this in the stock catch and not far off the leaders either. There's a race to the line a bit further back. That's between Paul Brock and Rick Groom that have had a good battle for 11th position and Paul Brock comes out just ahead. Yeah, so that's for 11th and 12th. Uh, Jason Wood, he will be pleased to get home inside the top 10 after a, uh, a challenging weekend so far. Uh, ben Bateman, he comes across the line, I think, in 16th place. I had that great sort of first couple of corners, and that seemed to be about, about the peak of it, really, as, as far as Ben Bateman was concerned. Uh, Finn Groom just going across the line as well, I think, to take 18th place uh, and complete his first ever Demon Tweaks Yokohama Classic Stock Catch Championship race. But uh, Pip Hammond there, and the other drivers showing his appreciation to the marshals as well on the slowing down lap, and many thanks to all of the marshals for the sterling work that they're doing here this weekend. At, uh, at Croft Circuit, it's a cliche, but we couldn't go motor racing without them. So many, many thanks to them for all of their efforts. But certainly um, a classic stock catch championship race that lived up to expectations there. Let's take a look at the results. The win, two number 32, Pip Hammond then. Nine laps completed and he was only just over half a second ahead of number 46, Chris Deere at the end as Nova beat 205. It was a Fiesta XR2 in third place of number 8, Pete Morgan. Then Martin Rogers, fourth in number 39, fifth in number 73. A best result yet for Jason Watkinson. And a very delighted Paul Forbes, sixth in car number 40. Titch Kelsall was seventh in number 89, ahead of Martin Kayser after his couple of offs in the number 88, Fiesta XR2i. James Hazelhurst bounced back to ninth in the Peugeot 205 GTI. Uh, he was number 12. And Jason Wood, number 41, rounded out to the top 10 in the Nova. Further back, we saw that tight battle for 11th between Paul Bock, Brock and Rick Groom. Darren Bassingthwaite, he was in 13th position, Ryan Clark 14th, and Robert Campbell rounded out the top 15. Ben Bateman uh, from the back of the grid up to 16th position. And Stuart Place, the only non-finisher, the man that started though on pole position.